I'm so excited to launch my brand new book, Astrology Realized, Your Journey to Understanding Astrology. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to this episode of Synchronicity. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. I'm here with the fabulous Paula Dare, astrologer extraordinaire, and we are here at the SOTA conference, and Paula is doing a talk, or did a talk, on Sedna and Eris, and I just had to pull her aside and say, tell us about that, because these are two asteroids that are part of any astrology student's path. You certainly are going to come across them, and I know there isn't nearly enough information about them out there. So Paula, tell us a little bit, describe Sedna, the symbolism of Sedna and the symbolism of Eris. Well, actually they're not asteroids. They're dwar they're called dwarf planets. Dwarf planets. They're, um, their orbits are very long. So the majority of people that are living today have Eris in, in Aries. And uh, in Sedna is uh, when it is it, a lot of people have it in, in Aries, but it went into um, Taurus in 1967. So um, they're past, they are out by the Kuiper outside of the Kuiper Belt, and Sedna is even closer to the Earth cloud. It's beyond, it's beyond Pluto. They're called uh, TNOs or trans-Neptunian objects. So what do they represent in a chart? Well, the mythology of Eris is that she's the the goddess of discord, and and she she causes a lot of chaos. All she wants is she's a big troublemaker, but she was not invited to the party where all the other gods were were invited, and she's actually the one who caused the uh, the Trojan War. <laughs> okay, so when if you're if you have a strong Eris in your chart, you are either the troublemaker or you know, uh, trouble comes knocking on your front door. <laughs> and we all have one area of life that is fun enough to have a little bit of trouble in it. We're blessed to have that sometimes. Um, and what about Sedna? Well, Sedna is the Inui, which is the uh, es uh, the Eskimo, uh, from the Eskimo mythology. They, they're the natives of northern Canada. And they uh, she is the goddess of, of the sea. And the myth, basically, the myth is there's a there's a um, a lot of uh, abandonment by the father, a lot of father issues that need to be resolved, and uh, he he sacrificed her when he threw her off off the boat in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> and she was hanging out for dear life, and he cut off her fingers one by one, and. As the, as the fingers were going into the ocean, she turned into the whales and the sea lions and the seals. And so <laughs> she's also, so the Inui hunters have a great respect for her because she provides food for them so that they don't starve. So, so in a person's chart, it is the aspects, the house placements um, that are, and of course the sign that is going to tell you how that energy, man, how that archetype reveals itself to you. Yes. And if you, it, it's important to look at your natal chart, whether they're connected to a lot of the personal points in your chart, that, that would be, you know, where you would uh, feel the effect of those two goddesses. So you mean like personal points, you mean like the ascendant, you mean the midheaven and, and you know, and... Well, the moon, the sun, yeah. how, how these uh, dwarf planets are aspected. So if somebody does have a have, find strong placements of these in their chart, how can they help themselves to learn whatever it is? Because I believe that everything is in the chart the way it is for a reason, and that everything is an opportunity to move towards greater love and greater wisdom. So if you have a particularly strong iris or strong sedna, how can you help yourself to, um, to evolve and utilize it towards your healing? Well, if you have a strong uh, sedna, I think it would be behoove yourself to look at your how you dealt with your father, and so in order to move on, the, the forgiveness is really the key there, because there's that's also an issue of sacrifice, and and you, you have to look at yourself and say, am I a am I a victim or am I sacrifice sacrificing myself for the sake of other people? And Iris, and Iris, it would be. Well, if you find that you know chaos is always coming knocking at your door, well, examine your life and what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> trying to keep her with the shot here. And she's going further and further away, like she's afraid of the mic. <laughs> and look, I, I didn't even say that into the mic, so that's not good. I'm gonna have to edit that, but that's okay. Just stay close, okay? Um, 
Okay. And how about iris? So if you have, you know, strong errors in your chart and you have all this chaos and disorder, you know, going on in your life, you have to ask yourself whether it's you, you know, and what, watch what you're doing. Are you, why are you causing all this trouble for yourself? Are you hanging around with the wrong people? You know, or if you're, where are you feeling left out? So change the group that, of people that you're hanging around with. You know, if you're not getting invited to the party, find out why. Are you being, are you the one causing the discord or are you attracting those people to, you know? Yeah, and you would look in your chart as well. Like if you have Eris in the second house, are you creating discord in your finances? If you have it in the third house, are you creating discourse with your siblings? Like, and so on and so on. Yes, and or also third house would be communication. So maybe your Eris is very intimidating. So watch your tone of voice, you know? It's so fascinating. I know that there are volumes written about this and there's so much to discuss about it. Thank you for bringing your knowledge and your love of Sedna and Iris. I don't know if you'd call it love, but let's say honoring these energies. Thank you for bringing that to here. We must honor the goddesses, you know, yes. and the goddesses within us and, and the gods within us as well. As well that's one way that uh, all these celestial phenomenons and, and symbols are certainly understood because we are connected to everyone and everything. And thank you so much for being here to celebrate Paula, Dare, and Sedna and Iris with me. Until we connect again, take care.